Is that good? Yes. All right. Welcome, everyone, to uh, the Halloween edition of Customer Education Roundtable, uh, <laughs> session number four, uh, online with uh, gong.io, making sure that we have uh, a capture of this to share with our other brethren, uh, not because I'm giving a shout out to my company or anything, um, no, no, but no. Uh, super excited. We have about 21 people in the room. Uh, very excited to, wow, every, holy shit, there's some amazing costumes here. Um, we will definitely <laughs> go through and do uh, some introductions, but just, you know, kind of uh, in, in customer education roundtable style, what we'll do is we want to get through some of the content and then about midway through the session, we'll probably stop for uh, introductions. And Leslie, thank you for, uh, uh, you know, uh, proposing today's uh, fun question theme, which is obviously, Leslie, do you want to explain what it's going to be? Yeah, so uh, it's around creating a vision for your program. Oh, that so we know. What, what's the fun question of the day that we have? Oh, ask? the fun question of the day. The fun question of the day, Abby, is what is your favorite costume that you've ever had for Halloween? Okay, so be thinking about that. We'll, we'll, take, a, we'll take a kind of uh, uh, name check at around 1030. Introduce yourself if you haven't been to these roundtables before. And we want to hear your uh, best, raunchiest, scariest, uh, most, most disastrous Halloween costume. Okay. So, uh, Leslie, let's go ahead and get started. We have, uh, you know, about 45 minutes or so to go through the main content and we'll open up for questions. One thing I will recommend that was super helpful uh, last time, which, um, you know, I encourage you all to do is participate in the chat if you can't directly, uh, you know, we won't, uh, if you don't, if you can't directly talk, participate in the chat because what it allows me to do is it allows me to export the chat. And I'm actually uh, keeping the chat as a record. So when we start posting these roundtables, uh, we'll take some of the best questions, some of the best engaging discussions that are happening in this chat, and then post it alongside uh, the, uh, the videos of these uh, roundtables. And, and Dave Dennington from Outreach is helping me put those together. Um, if, if there are people from uh, Guru in the room, I wanted to give a shout out to Guru really quickly. Uh, they've, vol they've offered to volunteer a guru instance for customereducation.org, um, which is really exciting. So very soon really we'll have cool. like a, a, mm. a wiki with all the you know, previous conversations we've been having, public cards, content. Um, so uh, you know, we're, we're going to really try and focus on, on keeping some of this because Slack uh, doesn't let me go past the 10,000 messages. So very sad about that. Anyway. Yeah. Today, we're gonna to talk about customer education vision. I know this is something that every one of you in the room have already thought about. Uh, it's one of those things that, it, it's like a cycle to me, right? You think about it, then you forget because fires happen. And then at some point you're like, wow, I've been fighting fires for a, a year, two years, seven years. Uh, let's go back to the board. And one of my previous managers, who's the head of customer education um, over at um, Bolt, he always talks about, hey, every year uh, we've got to come back to the BHAG, which is the big, hairy, audacious goal for customer education. And that needs to be out at least two or three years. And this is a really good time of the year to start thinking about this stuff, right? Because, you know, we're, we're getting into the holiday season. We'll be starting the new year, kind of new year, new me, new customer education program type of vibes. <laughs> I really want to, you know, uh, leverage that going into the new year, talk a little bit about uh, what what are the big questions? And honestly, this is uh, this is something I've been struggling with. You know, I'm, I'm like four or five months into the new job. I haven't done a terrific uh, job of really laying out the vision, sharing it with the world, putting it uh, behind metrics. My programs that I'm running are not super visible in the company, so I'm a little nervous to be honest, right? And I, and I really want to go into the new year feeling strong. So this is an opportunity for me to learn. Um, I chose Leslie as my co-host for a lot of reasons. Leslie, you know, is super active on the community, uh, but also she has a new role at People Grove, um, who is one of our customers at Gong. But uh, I imagine for somebody new, both in customer education as well as in, in, in a new company, uh, it's like, the, it's almost a double pressure, right? Of, of A, figuring this out really quickly on your end, and then B, sh making yourself look knowledgeable and sharing it with uh, the rest of your team. So uh, her and I are going to kind of go through this. The way I'm uh, proposing today is we really have four questions. And what I would love for you, uh, you know, a couple of you is to jump in and, and tell us how you are answering these questions today. How have you answered these questions in the past? Um, and what's, what advice would you have for Leslie and I 
you know, who are uh, sort of new in our roles um, in, in our respective companies, right? So for, for those of you that are uh, part of existing programs, I want to hear what, what's gone well. For those of you in new programs, I want to hear what you're um, nervous about, okay? And, and mm -hmm. the format is kind of simple. You know, if, if, you feel, if you feel like you have a good story you want to share, unmute yourself. It's a round table. Jump in. If you feel like you want something that everyone should know about, even in, in the future, feel free to start the chat so that we can continue that conversation both uh, over voice as well as over chat. Um, so Leslie, I've come prepared with four questions. I wish I had prepared you with these four questions. I, I didn't do that. Uh, so you also have no idea what I'm going to uh, be talking about. Uh, okay. So the first question for the group, you know, today's agenda really kind of talking about uh, setting a vision, you know, creating a plan, sharing that plan and, and making sure every, you're, you're taking along the rest of the company on this journey that uh, you're going on, that's going on in your head. Um, uh, before we jump in, I just wanted to give a shout out to Matt uh, Mullahan. If you're on, I can see you're online with some crazy mask uh, from yeah. Nero. Uh, Matt, do you want to give kind of the announcement or so to speak? Oh, well, I just pinged Sumo, Sumo uh, yesterday and I was like, look, the general channel has over 600 people in it. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. That's nuts. All right, so we'll take a second to kind of give a shout out to all the members who've uh, you know, joined us over time, you know, grown the community from uh, really four people to 600. Despite my best efforts, I, I, it, it's almost like growing even though I uh, try for it to not grow. So really appreciate everyone sharing it with your community, with your peers, with your friends. Um, and, you know, next year we'll definitely look forward to hitting the thousand mark. Um, and, and Matt and I ha are cooking up some secret recipes in the kitchen that we'll also talk to you about um, in a couple of weeks. Okay, so that's kind of a big announcement. Let's uh, jump into the questions. The first big question for me, and, and I'm, you know, I, I really, really love some advice here is how do you understand your org's top priorities? Um, and, and how do you align it? You know, how do you make sure that you are priorities are aligned with your organization's top priorities. Um, I, I, put, I put some random catchy titles at the bottom right. Uh, in this case, it's like the 90 day rule. And that's really for me to say, how do you do this in the first 90 days? It doesn't have to be in the first 90 days of your job, but really just in the first 90 days of when you decide this is something you want to do. So for, for those of you kind of on the line who've done this before, feel like I've done a good job, would love for you to jump in and, and tell me how you've solved this. Well, Leslie, maybe you can get us started because you, you're probably just coming yeah. out of the first 90 days on the job. So you yeah, tell us yeah, absolutely. I mean, this and is, then we'd love to hear from others. Yeah, I, I'm, this is, so me understanding how I understand my organization's top priorities, Samira? Yeah. Yeah. Um, goodness, I, I, I came in kind of a good position in that I was already a user of of the platform that I was coming in in customer education for. So I understand, I could really understand from my colleagues as well, how we were all using the platform. So what, from the user perspective, what the needs were, that was really clear to me. So the organization top priorities were made really clear when I came in and, and that is, this is, you know, as a, as a growing organization, scalability is, is why you're here. So how are we saving support time? How are we saving, implementation manager and, and strategic partner managers time by having you here. So I knew that was the top priority for having me around. And, and, and how were those shared with you? Like, is that something that is a document that lives, uh, that everyone has access to? Or is it just you and your manager? What's the, it was me and my manager. Yeah. So that's, uh, um, it's not, I don't know if it's necessarily written down anywhere, but it is absolutely the central theme of everything we do in every meeting we have. Got it. And, and how, one of the things I get nervous about is that what my manager says is the vision for my team is not always aligned with, I'm literally talking at the company level, right? Like what my yeah, CEO exactly. is worried about. Uh, CEO might be worried about uh, profit margin, whereas my, you know, my, my customer success boss is telling me, oh yeah, you know, we really want to deliver a great experience. And to me, those two things yeah. don't always align. So uh, we'd love to hear from others if you've faced that situation where maybe your team or your, 
you know, your boss's team and the CEO's vision may not be in line or they are in line and you guys done a good job. I'm going to jump in. This is Pam. Um, so at the moment, I'm running my own company, Zenia Learning, but um, when I went to a company called PeopleDoc, I was so impressed. My manager said from the very beginning, what is your mission? So to be clear, there's a mission mm-hmm. and a vision. Mm-hmm. In, in order for you to have a mission, it's really important that your company has a mission. Mm-hmm. If they don't have a mission, it's your opportunity to shine. As instructional people, our goal is to help people with performance improvement. The whole thing, all of our products are about performance improvement. Mm-hmm. The company has to be able to say what it is. And then everything you do needs to tie into the ultimate mission. As, as uh, Gordon said, it all has to cascade from the top down. Everything you do has to be able to tie into what's on top every activity, every mission. There's a difference between a mission and a vision. The vision is really Mm -hmm. how to achieve the mission. Mm -hmm. Okay, Pam, thank you for that. So there's this idea, hey, there's a mission, which is really like, what would an ideal world look like for your customers? Um, And you want to tie that mission, the company mission, to your um, to your to you know the one you're setting on customer education, would love to hear an example from one or two people who have an existing customer education mission vision. Just curious what that sounds like, what that looks like. If not, I'm going to start calling on people. So first one. <laughs> That's fine. I'm going to call on, 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 on Jonathan here. Interesting Chris personality. Oh, Chris, sorry. Go ahead. Jump in. Oh, no worries. Uh, yeah, Chris here from Guru. Um, we actually, it's interesting. We, um, we, our education team is relatively new. We spun up about three months ago. And we also, interestingly, spun up a scalable CS team, um, which mm-hmm. has a lot of overlap. So we had a conversation. We kind of brought together those two teams because we were like, hey, we're seeing overlap here. This was just yesterday. Um, just to kind of suss out, like, let's get clear on our mutual charters and how we can support each other, how we can collaborate. Uh, long story short, the, we were able to kind of figure out, okay, you guys are doing something very different than I think we interpreted uh, Scalable CS to do um, and enabled us to kind of uh, crystallize what our charter is, which is really to help our customers become successful at scale. The at scale is like the very differentiating factor that CS does not do. So we're focused on one-to-many efforts um, through different education channels that we're working through. So we need to like better articulate that. And after that meeting, we're actually kind of going back to, to re-articulate our charter and make sure it's really clear and we can socialize it. But that's the, the short version of it. Got it. Thanks for sharing. So Chris, I heard the word charter. I like that word because it, it feels tangible. Let's say you're from the education space. It's probably something you're familiar with. Mm-hmm. Uh, Chris, can you, can you tell us, is this like a, what does this look like? Is this like a physical document that lives somewhere? Is it literally pinned on your board? I'm trying to visualize here. What does a great customer education mission vision actually look like? Yeah. So, I mean, we obviously use Guru to document everything internally. Um, so everything from, from your previous question, like how do you know your, your org's top priorities? We have like our OKRs documented. So if I need a refresher, I just search that. Um, every team um, most teams, I would say, have a have a card in Guru that's like, what's our charter? And then with that is usually like success metrics that help us stay accountable to that. So all of that is is documented in Guru, and it's um, something that you know we kind of revisit. At least in our team, we revisit, revisit regularly to say, you know, is this still um, our true north, and are we are we um, prioritizing the right projects that map up to this? Got it. I would really be fascinated if you if you wouldn't mind sharing. I'd love to hear. Uh, what that is for you. What are your success measures that relate to your charter in particular? Yeah. Yeah. It's I, again, I, I uh, caveat this by saying it's still very like new and work in progress. <laughs> We're right. trying to nest under their specific OKR. So a couple of our OKRs at a company level are um, increasing feature adoption and that kind of splits out. And this is good that we document mm-hmm. them. The original OKR was all about new feature adoption. I had a, a conversation with my boss to say like, hey, this is great, but like this doesn't really speak to our breadth of features that have been in the product for a long time and the need for us to continue to educate 
our existing customers to get the most value out of those. So that was great because that kind of kicked off a conversation in the exec team to say like, oh, hey, we need to either like bake this into the OKR or make it a little bit more explicit. So that is the, the main one that we're really anchoring on for our customer education goals. So we're kind of working back from that to say, okay, our goals are gonna explicitly be feature adoption. And within that, we're gonna look across our customer base and look at our, our um, usage analytics and find out where where is feature adoption the lowest. Um, so there's a lot, I don't wanna take us down too deep of a rabbit hole, but like broadly feature adoption and then trying to get prioritize that further based on, again, where's the biggest gaps where are the clusters of features that we think if we can get adoption up, that'll help catalyze um, higher usage across our teams, higher expansion rates, and so forth. That's awesome. Thank you for doing that. Got it. So let's actually test that, right? Because that's an interesting one. I mean, we should we should know this. Uh, I'm curious to know what percent, like what people here have access to their company-wide OKRs on a quarterly basis. You can pull it up on a Guru card or you know, or whatever tool you use internally. Uh, I'm just curious. Let's see what the numbers say. And so, uh, one of the things that's interesting at Box, so I've, I've done OKRs at like LinkedIn and stuff like that, but also one thing that's interesting at Box is that our OKRs are actually open to everyone in the company, all the way from the C-level execs down to an individual contributor. So like you can actually poke around and see exactly like at the department level to the individual level, like where people's OKRs are and where they align and roll up to basically what, what the C-level executives um, yeah. This is a little tactical, Gordon, but how do you guys map? Like how, how literally where does this live? Uh, so I think, I think, so I think, in, so I think in, in transparency, uh, I think the, the intent is very good about being open and transparent, just like how all of our calendars by default are open uh, and kind of visible to the public by default. But like, I think practically speaking, this is where like, I think a tool would help us out. Like at LinkedIn, we tried a tool called Seven Geese, which was really great actually for OKRs and reminding each of us to actually look at our OKRs, not like at the beginning and end of a quarter. Um, but I think the challenge that we have right now is we literally, you guys are going to laugh. We use PowerPoint slides still. That's um, literally same thing. <laughs> we, store them, we store them in box, of course. Um, and then we have them in folders with like, you know, the department and, and like role structure as, as, as we would in like Workday, for instance, for our HR system. Um, so it's not very great from a discoverability standpoint. Um, and it's reliant on kind of the department heads and leaders to kind of keep people in check and in line. Um, and for the individuals to kind of like keep themselves in check as well. So it's it's like a good intention, but in execution, it's not perfect. Um, in fact, there's there's a lot of holes in it. <laughs> Got it. Okay, so the poll results are in. Looks like we have a 70%. Yes, wow, that's actually way higher than I, to be honest, I was expecting. Um, that, that's really good. So 70% of the people in the room have direct access to their company OKRs, can see what their you know, CEO's priorities are literally in, in, in measurable goals. So I imagine this process, at least in theory, should be easier uh, than it, it might seem, right? Like you have your company OKRs, you break it down to your team OKRs, and then you build one for your um, self. Okay, so we talked a little bit about how you, know, how, how you can get a, a capture on this. Let's, let's move on to the next question. Um, I, I call this like the cheat sheet. This is something I thought I, this is something I have liked to build, but I didn't build it. Um, and, and, and the idea of my cheat sheet, right, is saying it, it's like this, like the Jeff Bezos one pager, right? If you could explain why you exist um, and specifically in the long term, as well as like why you exist in the short term, like in three to six months, how are you going to change the business or how are you going to move the needle for your customers or for, whether that's your actual customers or your internal customers. Um, and if anybody asks, hey, uh, you know, Leslie, what do you even do around here? Uh, mm -hmm. you, they, you, 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 you have something to like show and say, okay, this is exactly, uh, this will tell you everything you need to know about what we do, why we do it, and, and how we're going to, uh, and how we move the needle for, uh, you know, for Miro or for People Grove or for whatever, any other company. Who has this in the room? And if you do, I want to hear from you what this looks like, what's in it, and, and, and how, do you, you know, uh, how do you actually go about building it? So I can actually talk about this a little bit because I just did it like two weeks ago. Um, Norman. So, yeah, how's it going? How's it going? I, I got in a little, a little late. I had another meeting that ran over. Um, but uh, yeah, so pretty much... Um, 
the approach that I took with this was, uh, yeah, like one page, um, just kind of did a revised mission statement at the top, just because our team has undergone a lot of changes, whereas it used to be a very kind of like live instructor led, like client project based, like education, basically education services team. There were like client projects, that sort of thing. Um, and we're, you know, launching our LMS next month. And, you know, we're just getting a lot more into like in-app enablement and just like more scaled things. So it just required us to kind of review our mission statement and just modify some things. So, yeah, on one page, I basically uh, just kind of put the new mission statement at the top. And then after that, I almost kind of did a glossary of the words in the mission statement. So just kind of like expanding a little bit on what each of them mean. So like when I say that we are scalable, what does that mean? You know, it's like we try to make as much stuff for as many people as possible. And we're always going to try to err towards what's going to help the most people at a time. Um, and I think there may be about like eight or so terms in the mission statement where I just broke that down. And then lastly, uh, it was kind of a, okay, what are some words you don't see here? And then explaining why those words are not there anymore. Um, and just kind of giving some reasoning for that. So I think kind of like on one page, it just really helps describe, you know, what we do, what we don't do and kind of what the, what the purpose of that is. Okay. And, and then what, what's, and, and how do you tie it to like what you're actually doing or is, is that not part of this, uh, Oh, yeah. So then uh, that's just outside of that page. Uh, we also just have like an objectives thing uh, that just talks about our different activities and what those tie to. So that that would that would be cheating because it goes over the one page, but uh, it's two pages total um, between both of those both of those documents. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Anybody else? I could share an example in Slack. Would that be helpful? I don't like. I looked at ours and I was like, "This doesn't have anything like super private." So, yeah, that'd be great. This would, yeah, thanks, Chris. Okay, I would love to hear another person jump in and tell us like a little bit about how do you take that learning on on you know what your company priorities are, understand the mission vision, and then and then convert it into something that's easy, digestible, shareable, and, and re relevant at all times. At Miro, our executives go through the painted picture exercise where they envision like the state a year from now or two years from now, and then they, they write it out as if it already exists. And so what we've done is we read through the painted picture and we actually took out just quotes from it and mapped the, the things that we're doing or like the bets in customer education to the statements inside the painted picture. And so we ended up with five major bets and strategies, and then you can de go deeper than that. But that was, that's our main methodology to like bring it back up. So we didn't tie it to OKRs necessarily, but we tied it to the, the statements in the painted picture. Um, it, yeah, it ended up being pretty, it's pretty digestible because it's in like plain English, the painted picture, not like, like. And then like, Matt, what's this painted picture? I, I just, I love the term. I have no it's, idea what um, it is. It's like a, it's like an exercise you can do. So our executive team does it every year and you break down your, um, your company into different like elements and categories. And then the executive team or whichever team you are, you come together and you, basically imagine the, the current state and you write it as if it's already done. So you say like, you know, the painted picture 2021, you would say, we have achieved this much revenue, or it could be like our brand is known throughout the marketplace as a leader, um, blah, 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 blah. And it like, it's just like a mental exercise to get you to commit more thoroughly to that kind, that kind of thing. So. Got it. Okay. So we, we heard from two people, kind of slightly different perspectives. Um, I love this. Let's, uh, oh, I'm, I'm scared now. <laughs> uh, dude, you, this is what happens such, when you volunteer. Such judgment. 
<laughs> Such this, judgment. Uh, oh, as statement. Dude, things, things that have names just stick more effectively, mm-hmm. right? It's, it's like, you, you guys in customer education, you, kn- you know this stuff. Like if, you, if you name something, people will not forget it. Now I'm going to okay. see some Medium post next week that's like why the norm statement is wrong or something. <laughs> I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to write a rebuttal and everything. Thanks. <laughs> that would be the favorite thing that happened to me. Okay. So let's, let's end this poll here in a second. Get like hate um, posts on Facebook. Also just one, one, uh, one request for those of you that are in the, in the chat or in the chat would love if someone just took a little bit of running notes just so that I know we'll have the recording of the conversation, but it kind of, it's nice to have just like the highlights uh, or things that, you know, will jog your memory. So if somebody can kind of take some notes, I would really appreciate that. Okay. So we have our poll coming in. I'm going to close it here uh, in a second. Let's share the results. Look at that. Uh, Uh, Norman, you're you're uh, starting a movement here, right? 65% said they're going to build the Norman statement. They don't have... Uh, you know, one one person said they hate them. I'm, I'm, I can understand why. Thirty um, yeah. percent. No, no harm, no foul. It's all good. Thirty uh, percent uh, already have uh, a Norman statement, which is which is absolutely amazing, right? Because awesome. I, I don't I don't have one, and and I would like to have one because I think it'll help me share my message or share what I'm doing um, better. Okay. All right. It's ten thirty. Leslie's favorite time of roundtable. Leslie, do you want to lead us on uh, introductions? Yeah, sure. So hi, everyone. So what we're going to do is um, first name, organization, uh, what you do, and favorite Halloween costume, right, Samara? Yeah. Sweet. So my name is Leslie Chamberlain. I am the customer education manager and the only member of the education team (laughs) at People Grove. And my favorite costume ever was my senior year of college and my best friend and I went as stick figures. So we completely uh, covered ourselves with like ski masks and uh, tights and gloves. And then we used like glow in the dark tape and then we put uh, cardboard under our dresses. So it like made it into a sharp triangle and then we went out and all you could see was the, <laughs> the stick figure. It was awesome. All right, Leslie. Okay. Next up we have Ben Carroll, Chris Anderson, David and Gordon Mack. Let's see, just unmuting here. All right, my name is Ben Carroll. I'm from uh, Coveo. I'm the uh, senior program manager at um, uh, of the education services team. And uh, one of my colleagues on the team had uh, found this uh, this uh, uh, event here and forwarded it along. So I figured I'd check it out. She's on as well. Laura Nunes is uh, uh, doing the list a little bit. And uh, so excited to join up. And basically, we're sort of a team in transition. I think uh, uh, one of the previous speakers talked about uh, you know, being focused on delivering um, you know, live in-person training. And we're really transitioning. We released our LMS uh, near the beginning of the year. And we're really moving towards um, uh, uh, really dividing and conquering our content, making a nice map so that uh, people can ease through it. And basically, the big picture image here, in fact, I've got it r- written down, is that we want to uh, deliver an informative and engaging and impactful education experience that uh, fosters success for our customers, partners, and the company itself. And the the, the whole idea is making that impact, bringing uh, down time to value, bringing up renewals, you know, those core things that matter no matter what your business is. Every Everyone in every C-suite is thinking about uh, revenue, customers, and employee experience. Awesome. Favorite Halloween costume and where you where are you located? Oh, I'm in Portland, Oregon. Um, my favorite Halloween costume, you know, I was thinking about my, my own costumes over the years, and I've had nothing but a string of terrible costumes, but I make all my costumes for my kid. This year, he's going to be, uh, I don't know if y'all know uh, what a water bear is, also known as a tardigrade. He's a tardigrade cowboy. Um, and uh, so I've made him a full-size big tardigrade with a holster and, uh, sorry, with a, with a, with a, um, with a saddle and a holster. And, and a holster if you can post salmon. a picture of this on Customer Education Channel on, on Random, I would really appreciate it. I will. Okay, I will. Welcome. Okay. We have Chris Anderson, David, and then Gordon. Hey, Chris Anderson. Uh, I lead a team called Community Learning and Love here at Guru. So we do both uh, customer education, but also building a community and focus on customer advocacy as well, since there's a lot of parallels. Um, here Definitely in- a topic for the future about yeah. community and customer education. Indeed. I uh, would love to dig into that more. Um, located here in Philadelphia. Um, and we actually had our Halloween party yesterday. So we we're all like, everyone in our office was all dressed up yesterday. So that's why I'm not in costume. But I think my favorite costume, if I was thinking back, me and a buddy in college went as um, Wayne and Garth. Wayne's World. Um, I was Wayne. And it was just fun because we were dropping Wayne's World quotes like the whole night. And um, Eventually, my buddy ended up like going off somewhere else, got too drunk, and got arrested, and that was kind of like a, a fun story because I was just picturing him in a police station, all upset in his Garth costume. And, yeah, it was kind of funny. <laughs> all right, welcome, Dave. Uh, Chris, uh, Gord- uh, David. I don't know how to say this. 
Well, luckily it's Guillen. Guillen. So, um, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, David Guillen, um, <laughs> the Democratic National Trade Team. Um, you know, right yeah, so the copy of actually, um, I am, I am um, a coworker who is also a David, is also bald, and the only difference between us is just a goatee. So every year I dress up like variations of him, and this year I am Disney Princess David. So um, that's, uh, that's, that's how it goes. But as far as favorite costume goes, um, a few years back I made a shy guy costume. Very excited with um, Super Mario 2. It's a little guy that you always kind of stick up and throw. Uh, that was awesome. So, anyway, that's it. All right, welcome. Uh, Gordon. Hey, uh, Gordon Mack here. Uh, I actually live in the Bay Area, San Francisco. I work at Box, and I'm actually in our headquarters in Redwood City down in the peninsula. Um, one of my actual favorite uh, costumes that I borrowed very shortly for a contest um, that a colleague had for whatever reason is this massive, like, squirrel outfit with, like, two big acorns, which was interesting, like, a borderline HR conversation, which is hilarious. Um, but that was probably one of my most favorite experiences. If I can find a photo of it again, I'll, I'll definitely share it in the, in the Slack channel. Um, but basically, uh, my, my team's very interesting because we are part of a professional services organization um, called Box Consulting yet we are also part of a larger customer success organization. So my department now encompasses education, um, community, user groups, and there's like a, a certification branch as well. Um, and so I oversee about eight different systems at this point to kind of make all these things work. Um, and it's kind of like overwhelming at this point. Um, but definitely I think for one of those future discussions I would love to see is just, uh, you know, how all these different um, teams, people, programs, and systems can interact with each other to offer a much more seamless uh, customer experience. Because I, I think right now what we offer to our customers is really fragmented. It makes it tough for them to get the value out of um, you know, the various programs out of box. Um, yeah. So that, that's actually what I'm looking forward to in the future. Gordon, Gordon is basically calling me out for changing the topic of this round table last minute. That was what this was scheduled to be and I was way underprepared, so I changed <laughs> it. Gordon, thanks, I appreciate you calling me out. All right, uh, we have a new member, Imtiaz, uh, uh, and then we have Jonathan and then Lauren and then uh, Lindsay. So Imtiaz. Yeah, hi, 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 I am Imtiaz. Uh, actually, it's funny when I tell people my name, I say it's Imtiaz, but Samara, you know how to pronounce it the right way with the, the sound. Thank the you best. for that. Yeah. Um, the, uh, yeah, so I actually am an instructional designer here at Guru. I'm sitting right next to Chris Anderson, which you guys heard about. That's his hand <laughs> in my screen. Um, and I'm actually on like day four here. So I started on, on Monday. Um, so I'm brand new to, to Guru. And uh, yeah, so my instructional design work is going to consist of kind of contributing to the customer ed team and creating courses as we kind of grow and develop the, the program. So it's really, really awesome. I'm excited to kind of be in this world. Um, uh, and so what else? Is, am I the favorite Halloween costume already? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, well, I think when, when I was in college, our group of friends and I, we all dressed up as characters from The Big Lebowski, and I was the Jesus. And so I had um, a giant purple jumpsuit and got to walk around telling people that they had a date on Wednesday. So it was pretty cool. That's awesome. Welcome. We're very happy to have you, Diaz. Uh, okay, Jonathan, Lauren, and then Lindsay. Hi, everyone. I'm Jonathan Anderson uh, from CanDo, uh, and we're putting onboarding on autopilot. Um, and thank you also, I've done a lot of user interviews, a lot of people in this community, and we are very, very grateful for that. Um, it's funny, actually, we just like, wrote our mission statement, so that's uh, leave no customer behind, so it's very topical. I was like, oh, I'm working on that norm saving next. Um, and best costume, uh, easy, it was, I got to be a Captain Planet as part of a Captain Planet crew, uh, which was amazing. I highly recommend uh, um, going as a Like crew. green green paint and everything? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, okay, if I don't see a picture, it's like, no, pictures already did happen. Okay, well, I was like seven, but we'll see, like, five. All right, Lauren Lentini. Lentini. That's right. Lauren, you're on mute. If you're, okay. We can see you talking, but still on mute. Welcome. Hi, I'm, I'm Lauren from Final Sight. I'm in Glastonbury, Connecticut. Uh, Keegan's my boss. So I think she's a bit more active in this channel than I am. Uh, she's in a meeting, so I'm here on her behalf. We're the product education team. Um, we're also part of support, which is kind of an interesting situation for us to be in. Um, and so we're still building and still learning our mission and our vision and everything like that. So I'm taking notes copiously. Uh, my favorite Halloween costume is my one-year-old son's Drake the Malfoy costume. Um, and so to go along with him, I'm dressed up as a witch dressed as a muggle. Yes. All right. Welcome. Uh, yeah, we, we love Keegan and thank you for being on, uh, like, well, for joining us. Okay. We have uh, Liz and a new member. I'm, I'm going to watch his name. Inunez? Inunez. Okay. So Liz. Yeah. Hi, guys. Um, just, uh, okay. I'm a dog. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm actually my dog, but you guys don't know that. His name is Obi and he's a great dog. Um, but I am based out of Denver and I work at SpotX. Um, so David, we should connect. Um, but yeah, we are, um, I am the, just transitioning into being the lead on the customer education team. And so I am very excited to learn so much from all of you. Um, and we don't know much. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> um, your reputation precedes you, all of you. <laughs> but I, my favorite Halloween costume. Um, last year at work, there was someone who paper mache a whole Mount Rushmore setup that she held for the whole day. And she was one of them, I think. George Washington, um, but she like painted her face and this is this whole setup of all the three other faces. It's very impressive. So it's probably one of the most creative costumes I've ever seen. Awesome. Okay. We have Lindsay, Inunez, Manish, Matt, and then Meredith. What's M's? Lindsay. Hey guys. Um, my name's Lindsay. I am with Ada out of Toronto, Ontario, and I am the entire education team. Um, so, uh, and I've just come on board recently. So I've just joined the company a few months ago um, and stepped into instructional design lead and kicking off our education program. So I'm uh, learning a lot. I've been working in 
education for a while and uh, customer success is sort of merging those together. And uh, yeah, the, being part of this community has been really helpful so far um, as I sort of start from scratch in this, uh, this new organization. So thank you guys so much for, uh, for putting it all together. Welcome. Uh, in Nunes, how do, how do I say that correctly? Hey, I'm sorry about that. Um, I actually Lauren, didn't realize. Oh God, Laura, Laura, I don't know why you're uh, Laura Nunes. Okay, I got that. Yeah, right. that's it. Yeah, that's it. I don't know what happened. I think I joined the meeting and it just took uh, my corporate email address, which is my first letter of my first name Laura, and last name. All right, so it's Laura. Sorry. <laughs> no, no, no worries at all. Uh, so I am working at Coveo with Ben, who spoke earlier. So I think he gave a really great overview of what uh, our company is, you know, what point our company is at. Uh, so I won't repeat, but um, so thank you for that, Ben. And I think my favorite costume is uh, when my sister dressed up as Corpse Bride. Uh, and just because she did it really, really well, and she had, you know, I helped her spray paint basically her whole body almost, or the parts that were showing, so her arms and her face and everything, and uh, the costume just came out so, so well, and she did it all herself. So it was a really nice DIY project, and I'm glad that I participated in that. So yeah, thank you. Got it, Laura from Kobe, welcome. Okay, guys, so we're running a little short, so we'll try and go through these a little faster. Name, company, favorite Halloween costume, but, you know, let's keep it moving. So we have Manish, Matt, Meredith, Michelle, so all the M's. Manish, welcome back. Hey, thank you very much, everybody. My name is Manish Gupta. I live in Bay Area. I'm working for a company called Bright Technologist. I mean, I'm purely fascinated by what technology can do in education space and building the customer education initiative. So I would be interested definitely talking to some of you what uh, the, uh, uh, these all three things come together. Actually, the next time people are very interested. And uh, regarding the costumes, so I just joined the company a few months ago um, and stepping into instructional design lead and kicking off our education program. So I'm uh, learning a lot. I've been working in education for a while and uh, customer success is sort of merging those together. And uh, yeah, the, being part of this community has been really helpful so far um, as I sort of start from scratch in this uh, this new organization. So thank you guys so much for, uh, for putting it all together. Welcome. Uh, in Nunes, how, how do I say that correctly? Hey, I'm sorry about that. Um, I actually Lauren, didn't realize. Oh God, Laura, Laura, I don't know why you're uh, Laura Nunes. Okay, I got that Yeah, right. that's it. Yeah, that's it. I don't know what happened. I think I joined the meeting and it just took uh, my corporate email address, which is my first letter of my first name Laura, and last name. Well, all right, so it's Laura. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, no worries at all. Uh, so I am working at Coveo with Ben, who spoke earlier. So I think he gave a really great overview of what uh, our company is, you know, what point our company is at. Uh, so I won't repeat, but um, so thank you for that, Ben. And I think my favorite costume is uh, when my sister dressed up as Corpse Bride. Uh, and just because she did it really, really well, and she had, you know, I helped her spray paint basically her whole body almost, or the parts that were showing, so her arms and her face and everything, and uh, the costume just came out so, so well, and she did it all herself. So it was a really nice DIY project, and I'm glad that I participated in that. So yeah, thank you. Got it, Laura yeah. from Kobe, welcome. Okay, guys, so we're running a little short, so we'll try and go through these a little faster. Name, company, favorite Halloween costume, but, you know, let's keep it moving. So we have Manish, Matt, Meredith, Michelle, so all the M's. Manish, welcome back. Hey, thank you very much, everybody. My name is Manish Gupta, I live in Bay Area. I'm working for a company called Bright Technologist. I mean, I'm purely fascinated by what technology can do in education space and building the customer education initiative. So I would be interested definitely talking to some of you what uh, the, uh, uh, these all three things come together. Actually, the next time people are very interested. And uh, regarding the costume, I'm not too much into Halloween in wearing costume, but uh, I had just a weird experience when, because I don't wear my parents the DIY project and made a four-year cookie. And when I entered the office, they just dumped on me. So, but I mostly love hanging out with kids, treating them. So that's my favorite thing to do in the day. Okay. Like, yeah, I'm just part of Edubride, which is obviously uh, a great vendor in the space. So you know, we appreciate your uh, love for the community. Okay, so Matt, Meredith, Michelle. Hey, everybody. I'm Matt from Miro, and dude, that's that is just so catchy, dude. Like I just gotta say, like Matt from Miro is just so catchy. Yeah, it's pretty good. Um, what what are we supposed to ask? Where are we from? Where are you from? And <laughs> yeah, out. Everyone else is in the channel, Matt. <laughs> Um, yeah, we're working, so we are launching like a Hacky Academy. Now we're hoping to launch an LMS and launch a bunch of content. Um, we're looking to hire some people soon, so we're in like the growth phase for CN. My favorite co costume ever was last year my wife and I dressed up as Bob Ross in one of his paintings. So um, we like did a painting together and cut a hole in it, and she was wearing all black. She put her face in the painting, and then I was Bob Ross with like a paintbrush in the afro and stuff. It was really, it was, it was good, yeah. I don't usually do tech shout outs, but Miro's product has like really changed the way I think about creativity. And so if you guys would like, go sign for a free account. It's an amazing product. It helps you brainstorm ideas and, and be more creative. Um, okay, we have uh, Meredith and then Michelle. Hey guys, it's Meredith. Um, I'm from the trade desk here in Los Angeles. Um, I'm a party animal today, so I have my party hat. <laughs> um, and yes, it's the first time I've ever joined one of these meetups. So uh, excited to be here, but um, I guess my favorite like Halloween costume. Uh, one year we did Dia de los Muertos and got our faces painted and had like the full flower crown and all of that. And it was pretty fun. <laughs> Welcome, Michelle, Norman, Thanks. Pamela. Hi, I'm Michelle. I'm in Dallas, Texas. I'm a freelancer and I'm helping a few different companies at various stages of starting up. I'm getting their customer education content built. And I'm going to cheat and say my favorite Halloween costume. My 16 year old today came down in a costume that she said only five people would get because it was from a story that they read together. Great, okay. Uh, Norman, Peter, Brandon. Um, I'm Norm, uh, working at Pergolate based in New York. Um, 
senior education manager at team of two. Um, we're launching our LMS hopefully this month, assuming engineering gets single sign on ironed out. <laughs> but uh, yeah, and my favorite Halloween costume, I once saw uh, three guys that were just wearing t-shirts that said Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and they had fangs, so they were vampire weekends. And that, was, that always, that happened years ago, and it's always stuck with me. So that's, that's awesome. my sign. Yeah. Okay, so I don't know if you went through Michelle and maybe, so we have Michelle, Pam, Peter, and then Brandon. Uh, we might have gone through uh, one or two. So Pam? Hello, so, oh, I guess I should show my face. It's still fit for radio. Um, so I'm from New Orleans. I think of Mardi Gras, I can't think of anything. My parent, my mother made us all flower power. That was a long time ago. Big old head things of flowers. Um, New Orleans is very good for creativity. So I actually work with Michelle upon, on a couple of projects. So that's yay, hello, Michelle. Um, and so my company, we help companies get into customer education. When customer success goes, oh my gosh, we can't do it all. That's when we step in. Got it. So yeah, Thanks for doing this. Of course. Yeah, and and mission statement, so important that everybody understands is on the same page of that. Yeah. Peter, Randon, Rocio. Hi, uh, Peter Goldstein from um, <clears throat> Bitsight. I've been here for about four months. I came on board to uh, drive a new uh, customer education offering. Uh, I had the advantage and I suppose the disadvantage of doing the same thing for QuickBase. Um, I was there for about four years. And I say disadvantage because it's very tempting to, to do things the same way uh, that we had done them there uh, um, when I really want to try to stay innovative and current with what I'm learning from all of you uh, and love uh, hearing the ideas that you share. Um, favorite costume was a, a very realistic gorilla costume that I wore one year when I took my kids out in the neighborhood and uh, frightened a lot of young kids uh, and they never knew who it was in the costume. And even now they're older and I hear them talk about this and they still don't know that it was. That is absolutely amazing. Brandon, Rocio, Sam. Hi everyone, my name is Randon Ruggles and I work at JAMF, um, J-A-M-F, and we're based in Minneapolis. Uh, I'm in charge of our curriculum and content development team. So we, uh, all the learning experiences run through this uh, group. So instructor-led, virtual instructor-led, and online training all comes uh, through here. And uh, we're just really excited to join, similar to Meredith, this is my first one, so I'm pumped. Uh, it's been great to see faces that I've chatted with in Slack, so thanks everyone for, for doing that. And my favorite costume, similar to Leslie, I was a, a clown growing up, but the similar part was that we stuffed like straw in our pants and in our um, arms, and it was just really cool to be able to go out in the community and freak people out and have a really cool costume. So thanks everyone. That's awesome. Hello, this is Rocio. I'm a product designer uh, at CanDo. Um, we do onboarding on Autopilot um, um, with Jonathan. Um, I just uh, I just joined the company on Monday, so I'm very excited about it. And my favorite custom is uh, I dress up uh, once as Igor from A Little Frankenstein, and that was very fun. We might have lost Simo. Lose Simo. Oh God, what do we do now? I guess we all have to panic now. Well, I think I might be next. <laughs> <'cause> <laughs> Yes, it's still on. I'm telling him it's still on. His laptop died. We'll be okay. <laughs> we still have more introductions, right? Yeah, I'll jump in. I think I was next since we just had an R and I'm an S. So anyway, I'll go. I'm Sam. I'm joining from Safe Software up in Surrey, British Columbia, Canada, near Vancouver. And I work on our training and certification team. It's a pretty small team. And we're just basically looking to adopt an LMS. It's one of the big things to move into a little bit more self-serve training. And I found the community really useful. So thanks, everyone, who I've been chatting to and bothering about LMSs. And my favorite costume was a last minute costume a couple years ago where I was a clam. And so I, I spray painted a piece of cardboard and put it around my head in the shape of like a clam that was open. And then I put on a bald cap and painted my entire head white um, and I put on a pink scarf. And so like my head was a pearl and it looked terrifying. It was horrible. <laughs> and it all started like dripping down my face. And so, yeah, it was good. It looked ridiculous. Thanks for me. Fantastic. Fantastic. <laughs> I think I'm next if you guys can hear me. Yes, um, we can hear Sharon Hall. Okay, my, my mic is all screwed up. Um, I'm Sharon Castillo. I'm from uh, Cloud Health in the Boston area. And um, I have a team of about eight people uh, who are, we've been building out training for a while now. And my favorite costume was an accident. So our company had, I used to work at a company that made luxury, did stuff for luxury brands. So I had to dress up a lot and I had a black dress on and like shiny high heel shoes and the whole thing. My hair was up in a bun. And somebody walked by me and goes, oh, you're a Robert Palmer girl. That's awesome that you're a backup dancer for Robert Palmer. And so I ran next door to Party City and got like an air guitar. And uh, so that was what I was for the rest of the day, but I had totally forgotten. And, Yes, the silly so, background dancers. That's there you go. Other folks that haven't introed yet? I think Yami is up last, I believe. Hi, I'm Yami. I'm also a part of the development and development team. You're really, really, really quiet, Yami. Can you try checking your mic? Hi, can you hear me now? No? It's still a really quiet. Better, not great, yeah. Let's see. Go talk to the Oh, that's a solution. <laughs> Just send me that computer though. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, got it. 
Hi, sorry about that, guys. No, hi. Uh, <laughs> hi, nice to meet you all. This is my first time as well, and uh, it's lovely to be here. This is such a great conversation. Uh, I work at the trade desk, part of the learning and development team, and marketing with Meredith. And my favorite Halloween costume was when I dressed up as Gay Pride a few years ago, where I was just very colorful. Was <laughs> That's spectacular. Nice to meet you. Thank you so much for coming. So, is this everyone? We're all here, except for Sumero. <laughs> yeah, he's back. That's so, our, I see him here. Yay! So um, his next question, I'm sure he's pulling up the slides to help us, but his next question was around uh, around metrics. So really looking at what are we all using? Hey, welcome back. Looking at what are we all using for metrics? What have you what have you all been using? What are you considering um, as you're thinking of uh, KPIs? What are you what are you paying attention to? Dreaming in metrics, nice. So what so we do is adoption of features. So we, we actually pull the features out of the platform and we, we measure before and after training of the key features that we want um, our customers to adopt. Mm -hmm. Adoption of features. How long do you wait to test to see if someone's actually used the feature? Is there like a 30 day window or something to look at? Um, it's usually about two weeks. If they haven't used it in two weeks, they're probably not going to, or at least it wasn't a result of our training. And out of curiosity, uh, is that a, a manual process or is it actually, actually built into the product so that you've got an integration it's so people can see? built in. Yeah, it's built in. So we use Gainsight and our product shoves everything out to Salesforce. So there's we don't have as many metrics as we'd like but we measure how many more users came to the platform as a, you know, as a result of training, you know, who, did, did they expand their number of users? Did they expand their depth of, of use of the platform? Did they expand their breadth of our, our platform? And so they have a whole bunch of things that then roll up to what we call a health score. So there are different aspects of the adoption. There's different aspects of retention and the health scores, but a lot of it is around what they adopt. Great. What a, Go ahead. Uh, one, one of the things that I've been thinking about recently is uh, uh, sort of a you know, springboarding off of that concept and doing something like gamification, like in terms of like uh, badges, like, you know, you've, you've unlocked the created a new uh, index source badge or something along those lines, um, you know, not only for uh, feedback, but also um, also to drive uh, additional content, people who take, you know, kind of like a, an Amazon model, people who look at this product, also look at that product. People who have done this task this many times might want to level up using this course. And uh, I don't know if anyone's got uh, thoughts about, uh, you know, about using that to, uh, uh, to, to drive further activity in the, in, in the education services environment. Yeah, I really like that idea also because this is something that our platform has just similarly developed a badging through, um, it's called Pathways. Um, so it already exists within our program anyway. So then I'm trying to think of ways we could use it for our, for our admins as well to write. So they'll go through these pathways and then they'll badge and then, yeah, what can... It, because you got this badge, this is what's next available for to you. And I like that people like you, people who have completed this, would like to level up by doing this. So that's a great idea. Leslie, thank you for, for holding the boat while I died. Um, guys, <laughs> I, I want to be, be respectful of everyone's time. It's, uh, it's at the hour. You know, there are two questions that I really wanted to end the note with. One of them is... Um, you know, how, you know what, how are you measuring your vision against metrics? That, that probably calls for its own roundtable where we can dive into metrics. We talked a little bit about this in the previous one. And the last one I really wanted to ask, open question, think about it, you know, come back, let's continue the conversation online. We have a community for this reason, which is really how do you socialize the plan? Like that's something I'm getting stuck with at, uh, at Gong, which is how do you make it visible? How do you get other people excited? You know, how do you get internal champions for, um, for your for your program and and really showing not ROI just to your boss but really to the the company uh, uh, company across across different teams. So I, I want to hear your thoughts on that. You know, noodle on it. Let's continue the conversation um, online. And uh, you know, thank you for joining. I think we have Gordon's already held me accountable for the next one. It will probably be the last one for the year. Um, 
in November. So we're looking forward to that one. And, you know, we'll continue chatting online. Hey, thanks, Sumer. Yeah, Leslie, thank you for co-hosting and, and, and for being a part of this. <laughs> Absolutely. Thanks, everybody. I really appreciate it. Bye, everyone. Thanks. Bye. 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 Bye.